rate in December, with some household our food prices soared to a record rate in December, with some households skipping meals to save money. Well, let's bring in our political correspondent, Mario Rora, who's at Sky News Centre for us. Mario, good morning to you. So tell us about food prices. Uh, they're still going up. Well, unfortunately, we've got quite a stark uh, level of figures coming out of the British Retail Consortium this morning. Uh, so not good news uh, for shoppers. Uh, we've got 13%, we've got a, a food inflation at 13.3%, you can see there, uh, from the British Retail Consortium. That's actually up 1.1% from uh, last month. That's also the highest inflation rate in that category on record. So... Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and blessings to the hopeful elect teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth, in the hopes that we may edify and feed the flock and the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And we are definitely in these last days, man. You got. You know, all I see on the news when I go on Sky News Live is talks of um, wars, rumours of wars, uproars of the people, strikes, winter strikes. I think today you've got like 20 plus thousand ambulance workers going on strike. Okay, you got got uh, uh, rail strikes happening over here in the UK, across England, Wales, e even uh, Scotland. All kinds of stuff is happening, man. You know, and now this, you got the uh, food inflation that this chick just said that she was reporting. It's been at its highest on a record. You know, and the reason why you have inflation, which I remember um, one of the brothers when I first, you know, like kind of joined the camp um, years ago, he said something about uh, he was teaching. I mean, I think, I think it, I believe it was the brother I'm a one, and he was teaching, man, and I'll never forget. And he said something: "What are you gonna do when, when a price of a, <clears throat> it was either an apple or a bread? I don't want to misquote the arc, you know, but he said, what are you gonna do when a, what are you people gonna do when the price of a, of a, of a, of a loaf of bread or apple is like a thousand pounds? And you know, um, what we know is that is Esau is gonna." Or is collapsing this global economy. <clears throat> okay, he's going to pretty much have these people's backs against the wall to the point where they're just going to be in total reliance upon him so he can come forward with the, the RFID or, or the NFC, all right, and push his agenda, which is the New World Order agenda, to have these people out here, C H I P P E D, all right, have them electronically tagged. Right, bag them and tag them. That's what he wants to do. All right, and he's gonna set up these, you know, these stations with the military. All right, because you got over here in the UK, where you, what, what do you think is replacing these ambulance drivers? They introduced the military over here. Okay, you got the army replacing these ambulance drivers over here in the UK, which again, which is desensitization or. Gradualism, if you will, getting the people used to having the military present, all right, within the public. And ultimately, <clears throat> you know, we know why this is happening, okay? Um, and it goes beyond Esau, really, uh, in its entirety. It goes into the plans and the blueprints of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. It's all about biblical prophecy, all right? But the Lord is using Esau on the left hand side to push. You know, his agenda, okay, because Esau is nothing but the wicked who the earth has been given into the hand of. And he's, his blessing is a sword. And he's going to he's gonna start swinging that sword sooner than you think. All right. And Jake is going to be at the pit, the tip of his sword getting thrust through really soon. All right. Get ready to see the, the devil come out in full force. All right. This is Revelation 12 and 12. It says, therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And you know, you got these elites, you know, which pretty much are like trillionaires, man. I'm talking about the Rothschilds, right? You know, the, the elite banking families, Oppenheimers, 
you know, uh, 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 you know, the elites of Esau Edom, the Gettys, you know, the DuPonts, these are the elites of the nation of Esau Edom, and they pretty much control all these major uh, corporations that, you know, you're quote unquote benefiting from today. All right, why? Because the earth has been given into their hand. Now, they could actually essentially come together and end poverty and world hunger overnight. But do you think they want to do that? No, they ain't going to do that because they want the people to suffer. And that's why the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 2 and, um, and 11, right? Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. All right, and the physical counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan is Esau. Okay, he's the devil that the Bible speaks of. Satan just means adversary, all right? The devil means a slanderer and a deceiver, and that's what Esau is, and that's why we don't trust, the scripture says never trust thine enemy. We don't trust this devil, man, okay? Because they can go up there and stand on a podium and talk in the House of Commons, and they dress up in their suits, and they say here, here, and they, you know, order, order, and all of that, and whatever, but at the end of the day, nothing ever changes. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer, Okay? And that's why you got these uproars of the people. That's why you got the winter strikes. All right. And speaking of uproars of the people, I'm going to go from there to 2nd Ezra 9. Okay. Uh, and read from the top. It says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. <clears throat> and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So we got to measure the time diligently. Okay, the Lord said, <clears throat> uh, uh, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. The job of a watchman is to watch for what's happening. The Lord said, watch ye therefore as well as pray that you enter not into temptation because we're not supposed to make this place our rest. All right, the scriptures clearly tell us in Hebrews 13 and 14, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. While Jake is out here, you know, saying peace and safety, they don't seem to realize that the sword is being sharpened. Okay, they don't seem to realize that the sword is about to be, be swung and, and heads are going to start rolling really soon. Okay, Esau is sharpening that sword and, 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 and sooner rather than later, sooner than you think, them troops are going to be rolling through them streets that you're walking in right now. All right, you might jump in your car, you drive down the road, right? You're getting on a bus, you're looking at these streets. You get ready to see those streets, right? Locked off. Get ready to see those streets patrolled by army troops get ready to see curfews be put in place all of these things are coming man because it's all a part of biblical prophecy the scripture says a man shall desire to go into his city and shall not be able and why is that going to happen because ultimately there's going to be all our anarchy out here and chaos all right e esau's running his experiments man okay and over there in china that's a model for things to come the things that was happening in australia melbourne that's a trailer for things to come where you had the army, the military out flying over tower blocks and helicopters. OK, you had uh, 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 troops on every single uh, 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 landing or every single level of a tower block telling people to stay and remain in their homes. That's a model for the things to come for all these major cities across the world, man. All right. And that's why we measured out of time diligently in itself. Verse 3, it says, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, and we are seeing that. It's not just over here in the UK. We're seeing uproars of the people all over the place, man. Okay, this, that the shit just ain't stopped. Okay, remember them riots in China? The China ain't even, it ain't even stopped. It's, they're still rioting over there in China. Because them people out there, they're not having it over there in China. They're like, no, fuck this. You had drones flying over tower blocks in China, you know, with speakers on them saying, resist your soul's urge for freedom during the lockdown period, man. Okay, over there in China, you got something called the Deadbeat Map app, where if your social credit score is affected, you know, in a negative way, you know, then you can't, you know, you get named and shamed. Okay. And you get a, a shit of services than everyone else that doesn't have their social credit uh, score impaired, if I can use that word, or affected in a negative way. All right. So th these things are coming, man. You see, they're meeting up for the World Economic Forum. They're going to have a chat. The fourth industrial revolution. 
where they're going to discuss the future of your life. All right. And it's all about the advancement of technology. They're talking about the metaverse. OK, incorporating, you know, you know, they, they keep talking about having your phone inside of you. And how's that going to be done in form of the CHIP? The Revelation 13 and 16, man, that's the M-A-R-K of the beast. It says when these things are happen, right, it says, then shall I well understand that the Most High spake of those things, right, from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Because this is biblical prophecy playing out at its finest, man. Okay, and that's why we're diligent in how we measure the time. Like this is biblical prophecy right here. Okay, let me forward it and I want to bring it to this part right here. Okay. Are obviously going to be spending more of their daily salaries, their monthly salaries on essentials like food and uh, energy. Now, it's important to think, okay, why is this happening? Well, energy prices are high. Let me tell you why it's happening. All right, and it's also... It's happening because the, the, the purchasing power of the currency that you're using right now, okay, is being weakened, okay? Because you have something called money printing, all right, where these, you know, these, ba these elite bankers have given the order for them to just be able to print money and print money and print it out of thin air. And what do you think when you keep printing dollar bills, essentially what's going to happen to the strength of that? That currency is going to get weaker. And that's why you're seeing prices. That's what the definition of inflation is, is when you stretch the money supply. All right. And then the purchasing power of it becomes weaker and weaker over time. And this is the main reason why you're seeing inflation. OK, and to top it off now, to couple that, you've got the war over there in Ukraine, which is supposed to be the breadbasket of the EU, Russia, Ukraine. That region over there is supposed to be the breadbasket of the EU, not to mention the energy supply coming out of those lands. All right. So, man, things are it, it definitely turning up, man. All right. This is the year of, of hope that these prophecies are coming to pass, man. So we definitely got to be at the end. Let's keep playing some more in this. The moment because of the knock-on effect on the war in Ukraine. Also, the war in Ukraine is impacting the price of animal feed and fertilizer as well. So it's all making it more expensive to uh, not just ship out the food, but actually... Animal feed and fertilizer. And not to mention, remember when you had the pandemic, right? They had to close down one of the major slaughterhouses over here in the EU. They had to shut that down. They were telling farmers to slaughter their animals. OK, they were getting rid of poultry, slaughter the chickens, get rid of eggs. Now they're having to ration eggs in certain supermarkets over here in the UK. And this ain't no joke, man. i got a scripture. OK, this is second Ezra 16 and 20 and 21. It says, behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon the earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. Even then. Shall evils grow upon the earth? The sword, famine and great confusion. So a time of famine is coming, man. All right, and victuals means food and provisions. Okay, so right now you can you can somewhat okay you can you can deal with the rationing system. Okay, yeah, I, I don't even need to get uh, ten crates of eggs anyway. I could just get one, or, or they're limiting it to two per household, or one per person, or whatever. You know, in certain supermarkets, the ratios may differ. All right, but the fact of the matter is, there's rationing services, or there's rationing. Uh, 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 happening in these supermarkets, man. All right, and although you may be able to purchase it now, there's going to come a time where you ain't going to be able to get access to it. All right, because when the time of the famine comes, there's there is food, but there's going to be a lack of availability of that food because Esau, the wicked, the devil that he is, he controls that food supply. Okay, remember, just like going back to the time of Egypt. When you had a, 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 a pharaoh, okay, and Egypt was made great, right, during the time of the seven years of famine, because they had a seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine, but everyone was going to Egypt to get their food, okay, and who's the modern day pharaoh? Esau, the wicked that the Bible speaks of, okay, so Esau, man, he's a devil, man, okay, and he's looking to starve these people out. OK, so as these victuals shall be so good cheap upon the earth, people are walking around. They're thinking that they're in a good case. They're in that peace and safety spirit when that's not the right spirit to be in, man. 
That's why the scripture says in Surah 5 and 7, make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in our security thou shalt be destroyed. So when you think you're secure, you know, you're going to be destroyed because you might have cupboards full of food right now. Okay. But what in that time when, when, when all these people, like let's say take uh, this city, for example, because I'm, I'm in London right now. And a population over here in London. In fact, let's look it up. Uh, you, uh, London, London population, right? London population. So in 2019, it was around just under nine million, right? Let's type in 2023. Uh, let's type that in real quick and see what comes up here. So now it's over, it's like nine and a half, it's over nine and a half million. Okay, that's the population. So can you imagine nine and a half million hungry, hungry mouths to feed in, in, in this city alone? These people, there's going to be a lot of bloodshed, man. Okay, and I'm going to say it like the Joker said in, in the Dark Knight. What did he say? These, these civilized people, when the chips are down, they'll eat each other, man. So cannibalism is coming back in a major way. Okay, so it says, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Why are you going to be destroyed? Because the day of the Lord is going to come upon you like a thief. Now that's the day of the Lord, which is likened unto the great and terrible and dreadful day of the Lord in Malachi, right? But leading up to that, you're going to have sh food shortages. You're going to have blackouts, more strikes, more protests, and they're going to become more and more violent. And what does the scripture say in Matthew 24? Right? And 13, I believe it is. Right? And because iniquity shall abound, let's get that scripture. Right? Matthew 24. Because remember, the wicked is the wicked. All right? And they're going to do wickedly. Okay? The wicked is the wicked, and they're going to do wickedly, man. They don't care about the world, you know, about keeping bellies fed, uh, fed out here. They care about total control. They want these people tagged electronically. So they don't care about uh, keeping, you know, uh, people fed. If they really cared about that, wouldn't they end world hunger? Okay, you got these LEDC countries out here. Wouldn't they uh, end their suffering? So that shows you that this man's a devil, man. Okay, and ultimately, that's why in the kingdom, man, these nations are going to rejoice when we're in rulership. Because under this devil, man, he's just a tyrant. Okay, he is an oppressor. Okay, and we need, and he's oppressing Jake the most. And we need salvation. We need to get out. We need the real great reset, which is when Yahweh Shai comes back and, and, and takes this man out of the rulership seat on the earth. Matthew 24 and 13, it says, uh, uh, verse 12, it says, because of, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, man. So people are going to be cold and they're getting cold. And let's read it in the NLT. It says, sin will be rampant everywhere. And the love of many will grow cold. Okay? So you're seeing you, you're seeing iniquity abounding right now, man. Okay? More and more uh, pedophile scandals surfacing. More and more wickedness being exposed by Esau. Okay? Uh, shameful spewing is upon his glory. This man is ashamed of all the shit that's coming out upon him in these last days. And it's all through the spirit, man. Okay, but I don't want to deviate because that's another topic for another time. Let's go back into this clip and we can, you know, uh, uh, follow up, you know, back on the precepts that I had in 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter and the 15th chapter. See, we're in a time of these prophecies kicking off, man. 2nd Ezra 15, 2nd Ezra 16. Okay, and I'll be thinking about these precepts a hell of a lot, man, because I'm like, yo, it's definitely popping off, man. And when you see... Every day, it seems like when you turn on the news now, you can always pull a scripture out from 2nd Ezra 15 and 16. Because that's all, all you see on the news right now. Okay. Produce it in the first place. But also, uh, at the moment, inflation is so, so high, even if perhaps it is falling, household incomes are not going to see the benefit until it falls much more drastically. And that politically is a bit of a, diff bit of a difficult situation for Rishi Sunak. The government are very much hoping and banking on inflation 
falling as soon as possible so that they can essentially try and get back around the table with striking workers and say, here we are, inflation's coming down like we said it would, and therefore now strikes are no longer necessary and we can find a deal. But until that... But you see, but the strikes are going to keep on keep on happening, man. Because remember, these plagues, this plague is being, this place is being plagued. The Lord said he will plague Egypt as before. All right, where is that? Is that in 2nd Ezra's? Uh, is it the 15th chapter? Let's see if it's in the 15th chapter. Um, yep. This is 2nd Ezra's 15 and 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. And I will destroy all the land thereof. Okay. And the modern day Egypt is talking about what? America, Babylon the Great. Okay. And America came out of where? Came out of Great Britain. Okay, so pretty much, man, the modern day Pharaoh is Esau and his kingdom is getting smitten with plagues just as before. Nothing new under the sun. The Lord said he would destroy all the land thereof. The land of America is about to be turned into a lake of fire, man. It says Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of or thereof and the faint foundation of it, of it shall be smitten with the plague and the punishment that the Most High Yahweh shall bring upon it. And what's the main plague? The main plague is the nuclear missiles, man. Zechariah 14 and 12. And this shall be the plague, you know, where the Lord shall smite. Okay. It says, it says, and they that till the ground shall mourn for their seed shall fail through the blasting, uh, shall flow through the blasting and hell and with fearful constellation. Woe unto the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. These civilized people, they will eat each other. Why? Because they're going to be in a state of desperation. They're going to be looking to feed their own families, look after their own families. They ain't going to give a damn about you and yours. They're going to take what you have, take what you got, and they're going to take it for themselves because they need to survive. So it's going to be a dog-eat-dog -dog society out here real soon, complete anarchy, which means lawlessness. Okay, let's go into that word anarchy. Okay, anarchy. The word anarchy, a state of disorder due to absence of non-recognition of authority or other controlling systems. Okay, the organization of society on the basis of voluntary cooperation without political institutions or hierarchical government. All right, and that goes into, well, let's keep on reading. Right, verse 16 it says, for there shall be sedition among men and invading another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. And the course of and the, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. That is the definition of anarchy right there. They ain't going to regard the government in that day. Okay, the rules and the regulations. People are going to take, take matters into their own hands. And this is, ultimately, that's that order of chaos. Esau, he wants chaos. Okay, yeah, he's he's experimenting at the moment. We know that he's experimenting. Okay, because he wants this he wants this thing to take off. He wants the people C H I P E uh, double, double P E D. -ed. He wants them electronically tagged. All right, but we also know that he's got false flag attacks lined up. The same way that he's done false flag. If he's done it once, twice, three times before, he can do it many more times. Because that's the format. That's the formula he keeps using over and over again. Auto Abkeo, and he comes with that peace. He comes with that peace and safety, right? He comes in the name of peace and safety, but what's it gonna cost? Giving up your freedoms or your so called freedoms. Okay? That's why we don't trust our enemy, man. Uh, what's that? Psalms. Let me get a, a scripture on that. Psalms uh, uh, 55. And, uh, and 21, it says the words of his mouth was smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. And that goes into these politicians too. Okay, they come slick, they come smooth with it. They always get an interview and they're talking about, yes, and we're going to make changes and this and that. But guess what, man? And that's smooth words, right? But war is in his heart, man. Okay, his words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. And Esau ain't stopped sharpening that sword, man. He's coming with that sword. All right, like I said earlier, he's he's about to show you the true devil that he really is, man. All right. So, back in Second Ezra fifteen and seventeen, a man shall desire to go into his city and shall not be able. Yeah, they're gonna be locking off routes. 
They're going to be having uh, chipping stations. This is what's going to happen in the near future, man. All right, that's one of the major prophecies that we're waiting for to play out. Because remember, man, hey, the Internet of Things, smart cities. You've got these new things now, 15-minute cities, man. Where if you're outside of your jurisdiction of your certain city, they, they're going to have you like in certain jurisdictions, like in the Hunger Games, certain districts, or in time, they had certain zones. Like over here in the UK, you got on a tube line, when you look at the tube map, you see zones. You see zone one, zone two. Or what zone are you from? What zone do you live in? Okay, so they've already separated certain zones in the city anyway. Okay, so you're going to desire to go into a city. You might have someone that lives in zone three, but you live in zone one. Or you live in zone two, someone lives in zone four or five. And you can't go and see that person. Okay, so this is, this is a, a, they're trying to take away your cars as well. They're trying to get rid of all the old cars. Introduce electric cars, which, which is going to fry you, and radiate your ass to death while you're driving on the road. This man is as deaf. The scripture says he is as deaf, man. That's in Habakkuk, the second chapter. So you see all this, this the chaos and the suffering on the earth, right, is, is, is happening through Esau. The heavenly father is using Esau to bring this pain. That's why the scripture says the same must know it after death by a pain. All the sinners of my people shall fall by the sword. Okay, and Esau's blessing is the sword. Okay, so let's go back to that, that clip, man. That happens. Households all across the country are really going to feel the pinch. They're going to find it very, very difficult. And if we have any very, very cold snaps coming up in January and February, they're going to end up spending more money again on energy, which is going to squeeze. You see that? Cold snaps, energy prices, the energy prices. Don't get me get started on that. Gas and electricity, that's going through the roof. Okay, the war in Ukraine, all of these things, knock on effects, wars and rumors of wars. We are definitely in the time of the end, man. Measure down the time diligently. Okay. And I got this scripture in uh, Isaiah. So all of this spending and all of that and spending on food, you know, the, 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 the working class families, you got Jake all up in the ghettos. They can hardly afford to keep the lights on. They're choosing whether to heat their homes to stay warm or to feed their families, man. Okay, this is Isaiah 65 and 13. It says, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Yahweh power, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. So the servants of the Lord, and which we hope that we are serving, the, the, you know, we're the true servants of the Lord. Okay. We hope that the Lord is going gonna, is gonna to feed us, man. He's going to protect us. The scripture says that the, the angels encampeth about them that fear him. And delivereth them. My servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Okay? That's why the scripture says, all um, uh, um, is there 4 and 6. Therefore, my people are dis uh, destroyed. Right? For a lack of... Uh, let's get it real quick. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Okay? So the Lord said, because you rejected him, he's going to reject you. You rejected the knowledge. That's why the scripture says, all that hate me love death. Because this word is life. And this word is going to keep us stable in these last days, man. My servant shall eat. The book of Isaiah 33 and 6 says what? Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength for salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So we have hope. We're not hopeless, man. If we're the true servants of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and we be of the elect, the Lord is going to keep us stable. The Lord is going to have things happen for us. Hey, the Lord commanded the ravens to feed Elijah in the book of Kings, man. Had the Lord, had, had, had Elijah drink from the brook. So Elijah was, he was eating and drinking in the time of famine, man. So the Lord is going to come through for his elect, man. Don't think that you're out here serving the Lord and he's going to leave you out there high and dry and hopeless. No, we're hopeful. This is the year of hope that all these prophecies come to pass. And guess what? Part of the prophecies is that the elect are going to eat. The Lord's servants are going to eat. They're going to drink. That's part of prophecy too. So we have to remember these prophecies too, man. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And strength for salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Keep fearing Yahweh Shai, man. 
Ba'ashem Rakaq Kodash. All right. So with that, man, I pray you were uplifted and edified. You know, you got winter strikes going on. You got all kinds of hell. Wars, rumors of wars, protests, all these things that are happening, man. We are definitely got to be in the last days. We're waiting to see Esau come and push that CHIP, man. Okay, because we're, we're living in a time of prophecy, man. So it's a very exciting time to be alive. Okay, because everything that we said is going to happen through the spirit. Everything that we were taught, right, from our elders and our apostles, man, the prophecies of the Bible, the, the breakdowns, all of these things, we're seeing them play out, man, in these last days. And that boosts our faith, man. Okay, that confirms what we believe. Okay. Now all the scoffers and the scorners, they ain't got a damn thing to say. Okay, because everything that we've been saying is coming to pass. Okay, and I'm going to close out with Ezekiel 33 and 33. Okay, and there's another one in Habakkuk 2 and 3. Uh, the vision is yet for an appointed time, man. At the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So we're in that time where it's not tarrying. The prophecies are speaking. This is Ezekiel 33 and 33. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet have been among them. Okay. Let's read it in the NLT. And But when all these terrible things happen to them, as certain as they certainly will, certain. Okay. What does it mean to be certain? Okay. The pro uh, to prophesy, prophesy means to say before, to be certain. What does it mean to be certain? Right? Certain. It says able to, fir to be firmly relied on to happen or be the case. Specific. Right? But not explicitly named or stated. Okay? Certain, man. Let's get the etymology. What does it mean to be certain? All right, it says determined or fixed, right? <laughs> this, this, hey, this is the Heavenly Father's movie, man. These prophecies, man, are playing out. It, the game's already been rigged. It's fixed, reliable, sure, assured. Be rest assured. Be re hey, these these words are reliable, man. Rest assured that these prophecies are coming to, to pass. It says what from the Latin certus, determined, resolved, fixed, settled. It's already settled, man. Case closed. Like when you when a, when a fight is fixed, oh, you're gonna go down in a you're gonna go down in the fourth round. That's a fixed fight, so you might place your bets or whatever. You know the gangsters. You see these gangster type shows. They do that shit all the time. You go down in the fourth round, boy. Like in Snatch, you know, which it didn't quite work out in Snatch. If for those of you that seen the movie. But you know, there was a there was a fight that was fixed. I think it was Bricked Up was the character's name. He fixed the fight. You gotta go down and whatever round it was, he wanted someone to go down in a boxing ring. You know? So when a fight is fixed, that person is supposed to go down in that round. And it, just like the prophecies, man, these prophecies are fixed. Alright? So hey, this is it, man. Right? Then shut it says, and certainly they will. When all these terrible things happen to them, as certain as they certainly will, then, then they will know that a prophet has been among them. That's when no one's going to have a damn thing to say. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. All right. So with that, man, hey, Lord willing, you, you know, you were edified and uplifted, you know, to the next time. I'm going to say Shalom.